Hello everybody. Those of you who are using an old style Lutron Maestro dimmer, I draw your attention to the disconnect switch right here. This is an old style disconnect switch and so is this one. This is another old style disconnect switch. If you've tried to control LED lights you may have noticed that the lights do not fully extinguish. I think this is called ghosting. And if you do some research online, you'll eventually come across a discussion about the Lutron MLC, minimum load capacitor. The information on the internet about the MLC and whether it solves ghosting problems or not is not consistent. So if you're tempted to try the MLC, I can tell you that in my case it doesn't work. In fairness to Lutron, who by the way have a very good technical support group, I find them generally to be very responsive and very knowledgeable. The Lutron technical group told me this would not work. Discussions on the internet suggested that maybe it would. So I dug into this a little bit further and thought I would just share my findings with you. The Lutron MLC, minimum load capacitor, is in fact just that. It is strictly a capacitor and uh, there's no resistor in it so you can't consider it a resistor capacitor snubber network for the dimmer control. It's just a capacitor. The capacitor selection is not trivial. So here's what I do know. I do know for a fact that the Lutron MLC is a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. That's what I know. What I do not know is the voltage rating, and I do not know the construction, whether it is a polypropylene film capacitor or a ceramic capacitor, but my suspicion is that it is a polypropylene uh, capacitor. And then I don't know the type. I don't know whether it is a type X or a type Y. I also do not know whether it is a type X1, X2, X3, or X4, or a type Y1, Y2, or Y3. My point is that in addition to the capacitance rating, the AC voltage rating is very critical, as is the type of capacitor. Uh, the X and Y capacitors are used for either across the line connections or line to ground. There are a lot of articles on the internet about X and Y capacitors, so I will not bore you with them. Additionally, capacitors can fail either shorted or open, depending on the style capacitor you've used. So my point here is that the selection of the capacitor is not trivial. Uh, it is really actually quite complicated and I do not have a Lutron MLC uh, to dissect. The going price seems to be somewhere in the $20 range, but every now and then you'll catch it on eBay for right around 10 bucks or a little less. So given that the devices were in the $10 to $20 range for a capacitor, I still actually wanted to try this to see whether this was a suitable solution for the LED ghosting problem. So here's what I did. I happen to have this little homemade test fixture. All I do is you screw this into the light bulb socket. It's got a, two wires coming out of it, two usable wires that are coming out of it. And then I can attach all kinds of different components to it to try to test things out. Uh, additionally, you could do it with something like this, right? A little adapter like this. Screw this into the light socket plug an extension cord into it. But since I wanted to try this minimum load capacitor idea, I did happen to have this capacitor. This one is exactly 0 0.47 microfarads. And it had an AC voltage rating of, I think, 275 under the European standards, but rated 250 volts under the UR designation. So 250 volts AC I thought was plenty safe for this experiment. and uh, this happens to be an, uh, a type X2 capacitor. And given that I thought the test or my experimentation was going to be pretty short, I decided the risk of fire 
or this device blowing up was pretty slim. So I ended up uh, trying it, hanging the capacitor off just like that, and firing up the lighting circuit with the dimmer, and at least in my case, with the Cree LEDs and with the older style Lutron Maestro dimmer, this does not work. So anyway, I thought I'd just share my findings with you in case some of you were tempted to go out and try this. And if this had worked, I probably would have put a fuse in line with the capacitor just to prevent any problems. But I was originally intrigued by this idea as a solution because it's nice and small and compact and it's easy to get into the light fixture. Anyway, the final takeaway here is I did come up with a solution. It's not the perfect solution, and I posted that up in my first video. It's solution number one. It's not the most energy efficient solution, but it's pretty inexpensive. Solution number two is also very, very cheap. And I try to give you a link to that video, which I'm in the process of creating right now. It works very well. It's very inexpensive and uh, very easy to implement if you know how to work with a soldering iron and you understand basic electricity. And then I have a third solution, which I will also post a video up on as soon as I get around to testing it and uh, creating the video. But you could all do me a huge favor, and that is subscribe to my channel. The only way I know that people find these videos interesting or helpful is if I get some subscribers. And at the rate I'm going, maybe nobody's interested in this stuff and it's not helpful at all. Maybe I should stop wasting my time with them. So do me a huge favor, subscribe. That will let me know that you think it's interesting and helpful to you, and I'll continue to create more. Thanks for watching.